Hello and welcome to o -Worm. Today we'll be continuing our series on mammalian organs and take a look at the cow eye. The cow eye is very similar to the human eye, with a few differences that we'll discuss later. The human eye belongs to a general group of eyes found in nature called camera-type eyes. The camera-type eye is an incredibly complex organ that sends visual information to the brain by using a lens to focus light on a structure called the retina, which we'll see later. Okay, so now let's take a look at the external structures. First, you can see that the eye is covered in a layer of fat and muscles, right here. I'm going to remove most of these later, but first I want to point out these muscles here. These are the muscles that move your eyes, and they're actually the most active muscles in your body. It has been estimated that the eye muscles move more than 100,000 times a day. Now, when you cut all of this off, be careful to cut around this thing, right here, which we'll discuss later. So now that I've removed the fat layer here, we can get a better look at the muscles. So you can see that the muscles around the eye. So now I'm going to cut away the muscles too. Again, be careful to avoid this thing here. So now you can see the eye here, and it's uh, very round. And this structure, coming off of the eyeball here, is the optic nerve. The optic nerve is like the highway connecting your brain and your eyes. It transmits visual information from the eye to the brain. Here, this entire white area is called the sclera, and this is also called the white of the eye. The sclera is the outer protective covering of the eyeball. This clear area here at the front of the eye is called the cornea. Like the crystal on a watch or the windshield to a car, your cornea serves as a protective window that allows light to enter your eye and come to focus on the retina. The cornea must remain clear for you to have good vision. So clearly this cow has really poor vision. I mean obviously it has poor vision now, but when it was alive, the cornea was clear and it could probably see pretty well. The preservative turns the cornea cloudy. Now we're going to cut open the eye to get a better look at the internal structures. I'm going to cut just along the middle. This midline is called the equator. Now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. Now that we have the eye open, you can see this clear gel-like substance. This is called the vitreous humor, and it fills the eyeball to help it keep its shape. This more liquid substance, right here, that pulled in the bottom, is called the aqueous humor, and it also provides pressure to keep the eyeball from deflating, but it also does other things like transporting nutrients like amino acids and glucose. Now I'm just going to remove the vitreous humor. Now let's look at the posterior part of the eye first. This beige layer here, I think you can see it better from up. Yeah, this beige layer right here. This layer is called the retina, and the retina is the most important part of the eye because it converts visual information into nerve impulses. How does it do it? Imagine a TV screen. Each image you see on the screen is made of thousands of tiny specks of light. The retina works just like that, but reversed. When an image is projected onto the retina, each tiny speck of light in that image gets converted into a nerve signal by light-sensing cells called rods and cones. Then all those signals get sent to the brain through the optic nerve, right here. 
In the brain, all those little pieces of information get assembled together to form the full image. This is a really complicated process, so much that nearly 70% of all sensory receptors in the body are in your eyes, and nearly half of your entire cerebral cortex gets involved in processing the information from your eyes. There's also a spot on the retina called a fovea, which isn't visible here, but it's where the concentration of cones, which give a sharper image than rods, is highest, and so this is where your vision is sharpest. The retina is actually also only connected to the eye at one spot, which is right here. If I try to peel away the retina, you'll see that all of it peels away pretty easily until we get to that one spot in the middle. So this spot is called the optic disc, and this is where the retina connects to the optic nerve. If I turn this around, you'll see that the optic nerve leads right to the optic disc, like that. Other than this spot, the retina only stays in place because of the vitreous humor pressing against it. This optic disc is also your blind spot, since there aren't any light sensing cells in it. Now I'm going to remove the retina. Now beneath the retina is this black layer called the choroid coat. It has a lot of blood vessels in it, and it serves to provide the retina with nutrients. You can also see that it's iridescent in places. It's very pretty and it's kind of blue. This is called the tapetum lucidum, and unfortunately, humans don't have this. However, certain animals like cows do have them, and it's to enhance night vision. You see, this reflective surface allows for the light that passes through the retina to be reflected back, and gives a second chance for that light to pass through the retina again. In animals that have this, when you shine a light in their eyes, their tapetum lucidum reflects it back, and that's why you can see their eyes glow. Now let's take a look at the anterior part of the eye. This gumball shaped thing in the middle is the lens. The lens is transparent in a living organism, and its function is to focus light on the retina. So depending on whether you're looking at something closer or further away, your lens will become flatter or rounder to adjust. This tissue surrounding the lens, called the ciliary body, actually pulls on the lens to get it to change shape. You can see these striations here, all these little stripes, and that's where it's going to pull on the lens like that to get it to change shape and become flatter. Now I'm going to remove the lens, and you'll be able to see how it's connected. So you can see right there how it's suspended, and you can see how it's connected to the ciliary body. These connections are called suspensory ligaments. You can see the suspensory ligaments better as I pull on the lens. Right there. Like that. So here's another good look at the suspensory ligaments. So now you can see more liquid coming out. This is called the aqueous humor, and it's in the space between the lens and the cornea right here. So now I'm just going to drain this liquid and pat it dry. Okay, that's better. Alright, so now you can see the iris and the pupil. The pupil is just this empty space, which allows light to pass through. If I put my probe to the pupil, like that, it hits the cornea, as you can see. The iris is the ring-shaped membrane, right here, that surrounds the pupil. The iris is also the colored part of your eye. Cow irises are always brown. 
but other colored irises have arisen in humans in the form of mutations. The iris controls the size of the pupil, and thus the amount of light that is let into the eye. For example, in darker settings, your iris will dilate the pupil to let in more light, but in really bright conditions, the iris will constrict the pupil to prevent too much light from getting in. You can see that the cow pupil here is an oval shape. Human pupils are actually round. Prey animals, such as cows, have horizontally oval pupils, which allows them to get a more panoramic view in order to spot predators more easily. Alright, that's the end of our eye dissection. Thanks for staying, folks. Here's a fun fact about eyes to send you on your way. The surface tissue of your cornea is one of the quickest healing tissues in your body. The entire corneal surface can turn over every 7 days.